Hello and welcome to African Brands, where we speak to captains and leaders of indigenous brands in Africa with special focus to Nigeria. Real estate is at the heart of renewable energy projects to object to the project during the approval, construction or operational phases. Furthermore, housing and construction sector also have roles to play in the provision of shelter, poverty eradication and security of the nation. Still on the continuing episode of the special documentary report, Amadeze Jenge Harry. Stay tuned. Haven Homes, connoisseurs of luxury living and beautiful homes. Since 2006, we have been building beautifully crafted, unique masterpieces that everyone wants a piece of. At Haven Homes, we are renowned for the Richmond Gate Estate 1, which is known as the Celebrity Estate of Nigeria and even Africa. The reason I chose to work with Haven Homes for my investing, number one, because of their track record. You look around Lagos and you see the properties that they do from the location to the finishing, to the quality, to the functionality of the properties. Everything that they've done shows you that this is the top tier of luxury real estate at an affordable price. Now there's more than enough reason for you to visit www.thehavenhomes.com today. Haven Homes. Home is where the art is. Ufoma Ile Sami, General Manager, Heaven's Home. Haven Homes uh, has been in business for 13 years. We are known as a commercial, contemporary styled home developers. Um, we've been building homes for a number of um, high profile individuals. One of the key things that people know about us is our Richmond Gates Estates, which were known as uh, celebrity developers. We came into business based on the fact that we saw the need to improve the quality of architecture, quality of the way our properties in Nigeria is, and we sort of looked into the processes on how to go about this quality and then so far, we've been able to make some difference in the sector. Even Homes, we see ourselves as a global brand. The uh, reason I say this is because we just co completed our first development in Atlanta, USA. And we, uh, we will see like in the next five years, we know that we're going to be a global international brand. I'm also very excited to talk about our present, our future, uh, which is the Richmond Pearl Estates uh, that is on, off Freedom Way in Lekki here. Uh, we call it the New Frontier of Lagos because people who weren't able to key into the Richmond 1 Estate or the Richmond 2 Estates are now you know, making effort to try and key into the Richmond Pearl Estate. And what is unique about the Richmond Pearl Estate is that we do have a unique development. The two, two bed apartments and three bed apartments are on two floors, which makes you feel like you're living in a home. And so most people are now trying to buy into that because so, it's, it's pretty much, you're buying a home at the price of an apartment. So it's pretty much what everyone's trying to key into about that Richmond Pearl Estate now. So there's a lot of um, property tech, tech companies now that have come up. Um, so we've been working with a number of them. So what they've been doing for us now is to narrow down our target audience online or on different on their various platform, and then um, put them in line with the market, the, the set of people that want in our, in our, in our, to meet our demand. So take for example, we engage a property tech company. So they will. Um, use this system to navigate the kind of clients that should actually be calling us and that's really helped and driven traffic to our um, development. It's not where it should be but I also do know that um, there are a number of PP partnerships that are currently going on with um, the government. I'll give an example of the railway um, projects currently going on definitely is a PPP, so a partnership that we, we, we feel the government should encourage and we really hope and wish that you know, it will be a success. 
the, w one of the major challenges that we face, uh, I would say, is the um, skilled workers. We have a large um, gap in the number of skilled workers that we have in our industry. Um, before, it used to be that there were vocational schools where um, workers like a tiler, a plumber will go to and they will get like a certification and then they will work many years ago. But um, that's slowly died down and we don't know why. The um, Minister of Education uh, look into this industry and see how they can get you can train people who want to get skilled in construction industry and see how they can train them, get them certified, and then we as developers can actually look into that as a qualification to employ. Fear of building material, well that's very common and we hear that you know because it's material, but we as Haven Homes, we, we even believe it's more than that because a, a, for a building to collapse, you, there are certain things that you have to check. So you start from um, the structural design. So the structural design is done by who? So the structural design is meant to be done by a certified structural engineer who then takes the responsibility to assist the construction throughout the um, life cycle of the project. So that means he's checking every single stage when the reinforcement goes up, he checks and signs off. But what typically happens in the industry is that people try to cut corners, you know, get someone who is a structural engineer but not certified, get the job done. And also, what then invariably happens is that you, when you cut corners on one side, you end up cutting corners on material. So that just automatically affects the building itself. Even homes. Home is where the art is. Allah Al Gaban, Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer, Sana Group. Sana Group is a construction uh, company. We started the business in Nigeria. And back in 2003, I came to Nigeria and I started building uh, factories under a Chinese company, the Lebanese company. Then in 2008, we established uh, Sana Group which is, as you said, is uh, an African brand and proudly it is a Nigerian, uh, a Nigerian brand uh, which now goes out of Nigeria to Ghana, to Ivory Coast, to uh, many other countries, neighboring countries, to uh, uh, Cameroon, to Chad. So it is becoming a real African brand. Then we start manufacturing our construction chemical, our blocks, our BAB. So the growth line of Sun Group shows that we are going forward to be a developers in the country than to be only a construction company. So the target of Sana Group in the next five years is to be a developer. And this will encourage investors to come to the country, will create more jobs and jobs for the Nigerian. Uh, instead of waiting to uh, an investor to come and have the challenges to, all, to own a land, to get the infrastructure to the land, to get the power, to get the gas, to get all of this one. Our uh, uh, forecast for the company is to be a developer who can repair this environmental for an, an investor to come, which now some uh, groups are doing, like uh, Torama Group, like Renova Group, who are doing the, that in the, in the free zone. Okay, we want to do the same, but inland. So prepare a good environment for investors to come in, in the country, being a developer. We have contributed a lot. As I told you, we improved the standards of the hygiene factories. We improved the standard of making the concrete, of finishing of the concrete. Uh, for example, in 2003, when we bring the epoxy flooring to the country, it was something new. The floor hardener, it was something new. So by doing it in the hundreds of warehouses we have completed, it becomes like it is the standard of Nigeria, which is not there in the neighboring country, for example. So companies, not only us, also our colleagues in the business, in the construction company and other construction company, many of them, they have the same vision and they want to improve the quality. They came from a good back, uh, engineering background and they are contributing with their knowledge in the local market. So technology is our contribution in Nigeria. No many challenges actually for us as a construction company except the logistics. Logistics means 
transportation with the infrastructure in Nigeria, the situation existing, which we have feel that it is improving, especially in Lagos, the roads are coming better and better. Uh, the board, of course, is a big business problem today. You must have heard about the delays in the board for the 30 and 40 days now in shipment. We hope that the roads will, around the board will come better. Also, uh, LFTZ now is investing in uh, new board, new Ricky board, which will be functioning in uh, three years. Uh, so this will help, I think, to improve the, uh, the speed of any project executed in Nigeria. Into that already by making our first BEB factory in Nigeria, which is the state of the art BEB uh, factory. BEB stands for Pre Engineered Building. So, buildings can be done from uh, made of, of plates, not only buildings, you are talking about airport buildings, you are talking about stadiums, bridges, uh, a lot of train stations, and a lot of uh, projects which cannot be done by concrete. So, by having this investment, which is a lot of millions of dollars we have invested in this project. With having this investment, this brings Nigeria forward against the neighboring country which doesn't have this type of technology, which can deliver earlier projects without involving uh, foreign currency to import those special items or those special steel structures, and to do all these items with Nigerian hand. So this is our major contribution in the infrastructure in the country, preparing the factory who can produce the infrastructure here. We acted already. We have under uh, Sana Umbrella, the agency of Henkel Bullibet, is a recognized German brand for construction materials, which can give always high quality construction materials. We are making some construction chemicals, which is improving the quality. Plus, we have made, and that's answered your question straight away, the company called Sana Block to produce, which I mentioned, a standard blocks which is really solid, really strong, has a lot of advantages of, uh, uh, against the local block, which we all know that Nigerian blocks are real wahala in the nation world. So Sana blocks is a real solution for this problem. And we are starting to provide uh, lucky side and we are moving to supply hopefully all the country with this block. At least if we don't supply it, People will, once we, they have the model and they taste that model, which is mainly in the Middle East and Europe, and they will feel that it's available locally, they'll stop using the collapsible blocks, which is widely used in the country.
Haven Homes, connoisseurs of luxury living and beautiful homes. Since 2006, we have been building beautifully crafted, unique masterpieces that everyone wants a piece of. At Haven Homes, we are renowned for the Richmond Gate Estate 1, which is known as the celebrity estate of Nigeria and even Africa. The reason I chose to work with Haven Homes for my investing, number one, because of their track record. You look around Lagos and you see the properties that they do from the location to the finishing, to the quality, to the functionality of the properties. Everything that they've done shows you that this is the top tier of luxury real estate at an affordable price. Now there's more than enough reason for you to visit www.thehavenhomes.com today. I just want to live here. Haven Homes. Home is where the art is. Managing Director, LLN Construction Company, and Andre Gida. We are a company that started in 1982. So that's uh, 30 something years ago. And we started very small. We are a totally African brand, locally made. We grow with times, and now I think we've achieved some. Um, standing in the construction industry. Then we started getting government jobs and then at one point we refocused the whole business and dropped the whole government angle and focused on the private sector. So we developed, in, uh, we developed our private sector clients and we've gone into development and we've expanded the, the company into a group. So we have a group now uh, consisting of about six, seven companies that cover the whole development uh, cycle. We are a one-stop shop for developments today. We've created a new um, niche for ourselves in the market. And this is basically by providing this one-stop solution. Normally, the construction industry was led by, you know, you have a, uh, you have a design sector consisting of architects, engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, and stuff like that, and then you have contractors and subcontractors and so on and so forth. Before, they used to go to architects or to family and, okay, we'd like to do this, they design, they call for tenders and so on and so forth. Today, most of our clients come to us with a plot and say, what would you advise us to build? and we take it over from there. So we do all the feasibility studies, we do all the financial analysis, we can raise the capital for them. We design it, we build it, we maintain it, we market it. 30 years of projects is a long, long time, but currently we have just completed one of the um, most luxurious buildings in Nigeria, if not in West Africa, on Fort Bordelon. It's one of the highest in Lagos today. Uh, it's a super luxury development consisting of three beds, four beds, duplexes and stuff like that. We are also currently developing a uh, mid-management development in uh, Leki phase one. Uh, it's actually in Oniru and Leki. That's, uh, and this is a mid-management uh, development also unique because it, it's, um, it consists of five blocks, 600 units of one beds, two beds, three beds. And we call it affordable luxury. So and it's a very big estate, three swimming pool, tennis courts and so on, basement and a shopping mall. So it's a unique development that doesn't yet uh, exist. Look, it has been, it has its ups and downs. We've, we've just now recovered from, uh, I think, the, <laughs> the deepest recession the country has ever seen. Um, obviously, the construction industry was one of the major victims of that uh, recession because of its capital-intensive nature. So, we are just on the rebound. I think things are picking up again. Um, it will still take some time uh, because construction costs are dollar-denominated, they are dollar-based because most of the construction material is imported. And since the big devaluation that we've had a few years back, um, salaries have not increased in line with the recovery. So obviously, costs for um, people to acquire properties have tripled, while their salaries would have increased, maybe if increased at all. Things are very expensive. In Nigeria, things are just 
much more expensive than anywhere else. Cost of construction in Nigeria is 30 to 40 percent more expensive than it is in Ghana, Senegal, Kenya, all other places who produce much less than what is produced in Nigeria. I think cost of energy is very high. Mm, this is one of the major issues. Although you fabricate, you manufacture cement, cement is still high. So all the basic costs of, of construction materials are higher than anywhere else. We employ in excess of 2,000 people. So the ripple effect of that is maybe 10,000 people because they're all families, relatives, this and that. So, and we have very, very low staff turnover. Very few people leave us. We have people who have been with us for over 30 years. We have second generations of the first generation so who have joined the business. We've integrated well in the, in the society and we do our best to survive and to make everybody else survive with us. It is not as widespread as it is in other African countries, but I think it's picking up. It definitely should be the ultimate solution because of the you know, global warming and the issues of pollution and sound pollution. And it would be great if all homes have solar power, if all homes have double glazing and so on, but still far off. Eh? Ayinda OK, MD CEO, Rhinoc Engineering Nigeria Limited, spoke on the use of renewable energy as a source of power and how it is taking over the market and how they are ready to tackle the power problem in the country. Solar came in as an alternative, meaning that you can generate your own energy as you wish and you can decide how much of the generation that you require. So the prospect has been extremely very high. Awareness is increasing all over the country. So it's a good business. Particularly, we have what we call energy cost benefit analysis. So when they discover that it is more expensive to run gen than to have solar. Now, when you self-generate using your solar, for example, you are, you are generating for yourself and you are completely off any kind of taxation. You cannot be taxed twice. You pay for your solar, you have it. Nobody is coming to you to ask you for any other taxation. No way. So we are ready. We have the manpower. We have all that it takes all over the country. Now, whoever that needs it, we are available to supply them 24-7. Emphasizing more on the importance of solar, the country manager, Ulu Solar, Doseke Akoraye, spoke on how Ulu Solar can use renewable energy to solve the power problem in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. Our target audience are people that are off-grid. So these are people that don't have access to electricity at all. There are no NEPA poles, there are no wires connecting them. And we also target people that are low-grid or what you call bad-grid, people that get electricity for less than four hours a day. So. When we look at our target market, these are people that they just have basic needs of light, charging their phones, maybe a fan. And that has influenced the kind of products that we brought into the market. So the, one of the products we have is one called Pico. That comes with four lights, um, a radio, a panel, and a battery. We also have a TV product that comes with a, a 22 and a 32 inch solar TV with an inbuilt satellite decoder. So if you have free to air, you can watch free to air channels if you have a cable uh, or a dish or you have an area for that. And we also have a solar fan and we have what we call a solar inverter. And what that does is that it allows you power some of your uh, appliances in the home such as your decoder, your TV, your blender, um, a laptop as well. So those are the, the products that we have currently in the market.
on this note we've come to an end of another incisive episode do join us again same time and same station next week you can also send us an email via info at africansbrands.com leaving you with this the only way forward is if we are going to improve the quality of the environment which is to get everybody involved amadeus ejengi harry thank you for joining us